From raw material production to cell component production, from cell production to battery pack production, the battery pack industry is complicated with many suppliers and lots of competition. I talked about the upstream of the value chain in the part one of the video. Today in the second part of the video, we finally arrived at the electric vehicle part of the value chain. So let's get started. To understand the EV industry, the first thing we need to know is that there are two components to it, the original equipment manufacturers and the EV manufacturers. In the case of General Motors, GM itself is an EV manufacturer, but it chooses to outsource many of its car components, including the battery pack, to LG Chemicals. LG Chemicals then supply the whole battery pack, including battery management system and thermal management system, to GM. Outsourcing is a common practice in the automobile industry. With this understanding, let's start talking about the geographical dynamics of the EV industry. In the EV industry, big players are mostly located in the United States, Europe, Japan, China, as well as South Korea. In America, there's General Motors and Tesla. In Europe, there's BMW, Renault, and Daimler. In China, there's BYD. In Japan, there is Nissan and Mitsubishi. And in Korea, there is Hyundai and Kia. In terms of the EV market share, Chinese producers were leading the sales of the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles with 33% market share, while the US, Japan, Europe each have around 22% market share. However, if we're talking about market share by brand, it is a different story. In 2015, the American Tesla Model S was globally the most sold vehicle among plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles with a market share of around 11%. Tesla was closely followed by two Japanese producers, Nissan with the Nissan Leaf and Mitsubishi with the Outlander. This is the data in 2015. However, since then, the Chevy Volt has taken over Mitsubishi to become the best-selling plug-in hybrid electric cars in 2016. Enough about the market share, let's go back to talking about the industry. Just now I mentioned the EV manufacturers, it's time to talk about the suppliers of those manufacturers. This graph shows EV manufacturers' level of control over its suppliers. As you can see, although birthed on the same land, Tesla and General Motors actually have a very different strategy towards their suppliers. Tesla chose to make its battery by itself, whereas GM outsources all of it to LG Chemicals. As for other companies, there is a trend linked to their respective origin. Chinese companies like to vertically integrate most of the productions like Tesla, while European companies choose to outsource cell production but keep the battery pack production in-house. For Japanese companies, they like to produce their own cells through joint ventures. Recently, the CEOs of Toyota and Panasonic decided to develop batteries together. Now that we know this is a common practice in Japan, it all makes sense now. In Japan, the battery pack of Mitsubishi Outlander is provided by Lithium Energy Japan, which is a joint venture between, well, these three companies. The Nissan Leaf, on the other hand, is supplied by Automotive Energy Supply Corporation, which is again a joint venture between these companies. In Europe, BMW makes its own powertrains, but its battery pack is provided by Samsung SDI, which is the biggest cell manufacturer in the world if you have watched the part one of the video. Renault and Daimler get their batteries from LG Chemicals just like GM. However, on a side note, Daimler is investing heavily in battery industry, hoping to produce batteries in-house, just like Tesla. So there you go. This is the complete map of the EV industry. It's complicated and there are companies like LG Chemicals and Samsung SDI you probably haven't even heard of. Nevertheless, I think knowing all of this is the key to understanding why companies like Tesla is at the forefront of energy revolution. Lithium-ion battery is the key to not only the EV industry, but also the sustainable energy industry. Therefore, Tesla's commitment to battery is its testament for a complete, sustainable future. This is also why I can find no reason for Tesla not to succeed tremendously in the next decade. Now that we have examined the entire value chain of the battery industry, here are a few takeaways. First of all, China is really committed to sustainable transportation. Criticize the Chinese government as much as you want, they are making tremendous progress in the electrification of their transportation system. Not only is China ahead of the curve in every part of the battery value chain, from the raw materials to the cell component production, cell production, battery pack production, and the car production, the government is also implementing really strict rules for car manufacturers to abide by. So moving forward, 
the Chinese electric vehicle companies are a force to be reckoned with. The second takeaway is that Tesla seems to be the only company in the United States that cares about the electrified future. General Motors and Ford are both not committed in the EV market with their half-hearted products, although GM has demonstrated great manufacturing capabilities by making tens of thousands of Chevy Boat and Chevy Volt in a matter of years, it is nevertheless not enough if we're talking about the EV industry as a whole, since many components of the Chevy Boat are outsourced to Korean and Japanese companies. The last takeaway is that there are a lot of opportunities for component suppliers of EV companies. Traditionally, component suppliers for cars are mostly located in Europe, like Bosch, Daimler, and so on. However, as the trend moves from ICE cars to electric vehicles, a lot of their core competitiveness will be gone simply because EVs don't use those ICE components. But because of this industry transition, this would mean a lot of vacuum and opportunities. Therefore, the European suppliers should quickly leverage their relationships to seize a piece of the EV market before it's too late. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Making videos on this channel is as much of a learning process for me as it is for you. I know that technical videos like this wouldn't drive a lot of views to my channel because numbers are dull and boring and it feels like a lecture but I do it anyways because I love technology and innovation. It is the reason why I started this channel in the first place. And most importantly, I want to know my stuff before I can talk to you guys about it. Nevertheless, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I put a lot of efforts into making these videos. Again, I'm Lei. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Respect the tears and all 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 the t